to Studio 10. Now, there is no doubt whatsoever that our next guest is one of this country's true national treasures. Judith Durham, of course, was at the helm of the Seekers, which was Australia's uh, great big first international uh, supergroup. And she is with us right now. Hi, Judith. <laughs> Now, uh, it's a secret shame of mine, Judith, that I was raised by folk singers. And, and, and so I, I know just how massive the Seekers were. But you were the first Australian group to go international, to really go global. We were, yes, and we've only just re re been celebrating our 50th anniversary. Yes. So our Golden Jubilee. And the fact that all four Seekers are all still alive and still performing is quite remarkable. We're the only group in the world where all the four it's members incredible. are I think this is I'll Never Find Another Year that went to number one oh, yes. uh, in the UK, Indeed, I think it was. Indeed, it did, it yeah. did, yes. We were the first Australian group. What was it like group. then? Oh, it was extremely exciting. And, of course, that's when Beatlemania hit. So we were rivalling the Beatles for the top spot. Yeah. We literally knocked them off the number one spot a couple of times, actually. You, you <laughs> did. Well, you had a very distinctive sound, of course. The Seekers have a very distinctive sound. And you became a bit of a pin-up girl, didn't you? Well, so I found out. I didn't realise that back then. But, yes, I, I, that's what they've told me. <laughs> so it's very, very nice. I guess, pop princess and all this sort of thing, which I, I felt a bit, you know, not good enough. I felt I wasn't pretty We enough. felt it was perfect, didn't Absolutely. we? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Back at, back at the time of those songs, and they're, they're some of the biggest Australian songs ever written, the moment you've, you've finished pen to paper on them, do you sit back and go, wow, we've just written a mega hit, or do you have no idea when it comes out if it's going to be incredibly popular or a mid-level? Do you sometimes have a feel, wow, this is going to be a monster? Well, to be honest, we didn't write um, those big hits. Mm. Tom Springfield wrote our big hits. So I'll never find another you took any, everyone by surprise. Uh, that's Dusty Springfield's brother, of course. And he went on to write, um, of course, The Carnival Is Over mm. and A World Of Our Own and Georgie Girl, the really big one. I've recently been writing some songs and I've recently got a, a song out, which is a Christmas song, so I'm very thrilled about that. How did fame change the group? It didn't change the group. This is what is so amazing. You know, we just continued to be ourselves. We still sing exactly the same way. We didn't have any gimmicks or anything like that. So I think we are very, very fortunate. So many people think they have to change and they have to become something that they're not. And it's a pity because they never have that experience of just being true to themselves and being natural, and that's what's been long-lasting for the season. the stories I heard about you and Athel Guy being thrown out of nightclubs at yeah. four in the morning for just partying <laughs> too hard. TV out the hotel with the window, right. out the window, and brushes oh, going look, all. Yeah, you and can believe it all if you want to. You were just simple mm -hmm. Aussie legends, you were. really, weren't you? Look, we were, and truly, aren't we lucky? And aren't we lucky to have music that's lasting year after year after year, long after we're dead. And I think it's important, you know, to people realise if, if you have melody, if you have rhythm, simple, you know, and of course Christmas is like that when you sing. A lot of it is sings, songs we want to sing along to. That's right. Well, we just heard Georgie Girl before, which was another massive hit. It went to yes. number one in the US. Um, yes. Had a whole movie mm -hmm. named yeah. <laughs> um, And of course, it wasn't, it wasn't all wine and roses. You had some awful um, obstacles in your life. Uh, you were in a, a terrible car accident in 1990, and you had a brain hemorrhage just a, a couple of years ago that almost killed you. Well, I was, I was very, very fortunate that the people around me cared for me so quickly and so I'm very lucky to be back on track and have, we've finished recently our Golden Jubilee tour around the world. But for me it was all a surprise as to whether or not I'd be able to sing again, mm. whether I'd be able to keep rhythm, because mm. some people, you know, you can't do things that you just take for granted. I had to learn to read and write properly again and things like that. So it's a long learning curve, but I've learned that you shouldn't, you shouldn't assume anything. My belief now is to just be open and wait to see what is in store for you. And, of course, to stay positive through it all is the most and, and important yeah. thing. And, and there, was a, there was your husband, Ron Edgeworth's big battle with murder your own Absolutely. disease. Which you, and you still work for that organisation, don't yes, you? Yes, I do. I try to raise awareness. It's so important to be able to use any possible platform where you can get a, a really good cause out. I mean, you're a person like that as well. You know, it's so difficult for people to get um, some sort of publicity when it's something that is so important. And with motor neurone disease, it's a terminal illness. And with Ron, he was so courageous and he said, yes, 
asked when I was asked to be national patron. So it meant that from, from then on we were able to raise funds and all around the world, all the concerts and everything. It's just been amazing. It's really <laughs> fabulous. And of course, uh, Judith Durham is still going strong. Make no mistake about that. Uh, her latest DVD and CD, Diamond Night and Live in London. And of course, what possible uh, superstar would be complete without her very own Christmas album? That's yeah. Judith Durham's <laughs> Christmas time. <laughs> So go and do yourself a favour, as they say. And I, I did see Judith and the Stafford brothers talking outside. There is going to be a monster compilation album next Christmas. <laughs> next Christmas. That would it's be the great. Seekers <laughs> House remix. Can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> you, you heard it here. Yes. Judith, it's lovely to have you on the show. Thank you so much. And coming up, Angela Bishop in Hollywood with all the best in celebrity news. Stay with us, Studio 10. <laughs>